All right, everybody, welcome. I'm Dr. Ford, the Nikki Doc. So we are in the middle of the month of September and September is the Nikki Awareness Month. So I decided to make a series of videos starting with today's, which is gonna be basically an orientation for new parents that are coming into the NICU. What is the NICU? Who are the people who work there? And what do you have to do the first time you walk into the NICU? And I'll be doing a series of different videos this whole month regarding kind of a quick, just brief and orientation of what the NICU is all about. All right, as usual, if you like my videos, please go ahead and like, share, subscribe, you know, give me a thumbs up, go ahead and hit that bell, and that way you'll be notified as soon as new videos come up. All right, let's go ahead and get to today's video. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets, teaching the families, bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. So what exactly is the NICU? Well, first of all, NICU stands for Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. What that is, it's a place where we take care of babies who are either born sick or they're born premature and need some help until they kind of grow older and be able to go home with the parents or that they have some congenital defect. What that means is they're born with something, whether it's a heart problem or brain problem, and they need some help, again, to try and transition to be able to go home safely with the families. So, so that's what the NICU is about. It's a place for us to be able to care for babies, get them to a point, get them better to a point where they can go home with the families and you know, let you guys uh, enjoy them outside. And sometimes they still need some help outside and we help you and prepare you, put you with this, the right specialist to be able to take care of your baby outside as well, okay? So let's talk about the people who actually work in the NICU. Well, first of all, the NICU can be a really overwhelming place. Obviously, most people don't plan to ever get to know the NICU. So you walk in there, there's a ton of people. It's scary, lots of things going on initially with your baby. It seems what I call controlled chaos. It seems chaotic, lots of things are happening. And that's where we kind of jump in to really try and communicate and make sure you know what's going on as we're doing it. If your baby is born with a congenital defect, with a problem, you may be meeting other folks. So let's talk about the actual who works in the NICU. And I actually have a video in detail that I'll go ahead, you can hit that little, uh, that little flag, that little button up there, and you'll be able to look at the whole full video on who actually works in the NICU. But I'm gonna give you a kind of quick brief. So you will be meeting lots of people, in the NICU, there are nurses who take care of your baby. There are respiratory therapists. They kind of deal with the ventilator or any type of support your baby may require. You also have nurse practitioners. These are trained nurses that have gone through extra training to take care of your premature baby or your baby who is sick. We also have uh, psychologists, certain places have psychologists, they have music therapy, people will come in, will actually you know, play music for your child. Then there are the physicians or the training physicians. So you have medical students, you have also residents, these are uh, people that are actually going through the training to become pediatricians or sometimes internal medicine and pediatrics where they're trained to be pediatricians or adult or and take care of adults as well. You also have then the next level, which is fellows. And what that is, is these are pediatricians who have already gone through the training and they're now training to be neonatologists, meaning specialists of the intensive care unit of the NICU. And then beyond that, you have the neonatologists such as myself. We are now physicians that have gone through all that training to be able to make sure we have all the understanding, all the skills to take care of your baby, get them better, get them stable so that they can go home with the parents. 
you will also most likely meet other specialists. If your baby has a brain problem, you may meet a neurologist, a brain specialist. If your baby has a heart problem, you may meet a cardiologist, a heart specialist. So as you can tell, ton of tons of people will be going in and out. They will be introducing themselves. Sometimes you'll forget names because again, there are so many people sometimes that you meet. Um, so just keep on asking, hey, you know, let me know who you are, who are you, which service are you coming with, uh, what are you doing for my baby? Completely, completely okay to ask. As new parents, you're gonna be going in, and as I mentioned before, it's gonna be overwhelming, not only by the number of people, but what's actually going on. We're gonna be throwing out a lot of medical terms, and again, it's our job to make sure we explain that. Sometimes we forget, we use those terms so much, something as simple as an IV may be confusing, or you've never heard of what an IV is, an intravenous catheter, or something that you put that you can run some fluids through. So, you know, make sure you carry an agenda, a notebook, something where you can make notes for some of these terms, and you can ask either at that moment or write these things down and ask later the nurses or you know call your your physician your resident whoever's taking care of you your nurse practitioner so you can get some of these answers also a lot of the times we do our rounds we ask you do you have any questions you know most parents again because it's overwhelming you get a lot of information especially when we do our rounds it's okay to go ahead and afterwards you know, realize, oh, I forgot to ask A, B, C, and D. Write that down in your notebook, find somebody to answer those questions, and make sure you really do get those questions answered. We really need to make sure that, you know, knowledge is, is so important. We need to empower the families to have more control, to have more knowledge and understanding, to write these things down, and we will answer that for you, I promise. Another great thing is actually establishing a connection or you know, finding connections with social media parents. A lot of families have gone through something very similar or just being in the NICU just like yourself. So it's important to find a connection, be able to ask questions of other families. Again, we may put you in contact with other families, but for the most part, you can find them through social media, different, you know, either Instagram, Facebook, you know, find different areas where you can find that. I'm gonna put in my plug in that I'm actually on Instagram as well, so please, if you wanna follow me, you, you can go ahead and, and uh, you know, find the Nikki Doc, at Nikki Doc, and I, what I try and do is I always, you know, post a lot of information, uh, things that you can learn from, but also just kind of general stuff about the NICU, so uh, there's my plug. But, you know, feel free to always, you know, reach out to different families. I think it really is helpful to, the NICU community is so good, so strong, and ex ex extremely smart and knowledgeable. So learn from other families. They'll, they're gonna give you a ton of tips too. A common theme of the NICU for a lot of families, and again, I haven't personally been through the NICU with a sick child, but I've talked to a lot of families. And one of the general concerns is not feeling like you have any control. It, for a lot of families, it feels like you're basically just handing the baby over to the physician, to the medical team, and then you're, you know, you're holding back and, and, and trying to do something, but you don't know if you want to, you know, step up, if you're stepping over a boundary, if you should be doing A, B, C, or D. Again, our goal is really to make sure that you have the knowledge that you empower, and there really is a whole lot that you can do. I honestly, and this is my own personal feeling, I honestly feel that babies do better when the families are involved, when the parents are involved. And I know COVID is you know, making things very challenging, but again, you can still really feel a lot of control. So what are the things that you can do? First of all, kangaroo care. So kangaroo care is basically where it's, you, you really hold your baby, you can do skin to skin, and you can even do that. Obviously you need to ask the nurse, you need to ask the medical team, but you can even do that if your baby is with a breathing tube. We try and get babies onto the, the parents, the moms or the dads, skin to skin, so that there's really a lot of bonding that can happen with that. Psychologically, it's amazing, but also physiologically, meaning the, the vital signs can actually improve sometimes with babies when they go skin to skin. Uh, it really helps out a lot of families. So make sure from the get-go, you let the family, the, the nursing uh, team, the medical team know 
you know, I'd really like to hold my baby as soon as possible. And we'll let you know when it's a good time. Obviously, the baby's really, really sick. We may need to hold off a few days, sometimes even more than that. But we will let you know and, and, and you know, be very involved with kangaroo care. It's really, really good in so many ways. Another thing is also be present on rounds. A lot of the stuff that we say on rounds, there is a lot of medical mumbo jumbo. And, and part of what I do with YouTube and my Instagram account is to try and teach you some of this lingo, some of these terms. But obviously there's still gonna be a lot of things you may not know, but that doesn't mean that at the end of rounds, you can't ask for a summary. Usually we're good at kind of giving you a quick summary, but you can also ask, can you explain, you mentioned this, if it's a kind of a long explanation, sometimes what I'll do, because obviously we do have to get through a lot of babies uh, in the NICU, sometimes I'll let the families know, hey, let me come back after rounds and I'll explain, let's have a sit down, I'll explain everything that we, you know, we talked about on rounds in a little bit more detail, give you the time so that you can really get all your questions answered but you know really feel free to be as engaged as you want to some families want to be very standoffish and, and and you know basically just say you know doc you do what you got to do and then just kind of give me a quick bit quick summary of, of what happened but other families want to be really involved really engaged and start kind of making as they understand when you first come in you're not going to know what CPAP is you're not going to know what FIO2 is and some of these other terms, most people don't know this. But in time, you're gonna learn this. And this is where you begin to have that back and forth with your medical team to say, hey, is this a good day to go down on the CPAP? Or I heard you were wanting to go down on the CPAP. You know, I'm not feeling it today. Let me explain why. And we, we, we have this nice back and forth with families. So again, you really can take control of the situation. And we like to give that back because sometimes it does feel like you have very little control, but there's really a lot that families can do in the NICU. Once you have been in the NICU for a little bit and you've been at least for a few days and, and sometimes even you know beyond that, you're gonna begin to establish trust with certain people, with the nurses, with the nurse practitioners. And know that you can actually ask them if they could be your primary nurse or primary nurse practitioner. What does that mean? Basically, we try and always make sure we keep the families together with the same group of people. It's really hard for the physicians to do because you know we, we tend to change a lot and you know sometimes every day there are some units where there's a different doctor every day. We for example in our place we do three weeks straight and then we come off for another three weeks in which case you meet another physician. But the nurses and the nurse practitioners are there, are there you know, the great majority of the time. And if you really establish that trust, if you've established a good rapport and good relationship, know that you can ask, hey, you know, I, I'd really like to ask if you would be you know, our baby's primary nurse or primary nurse practitioner. We have a nice relationship <clears throat> and it's a click. So if they feel that same way, they'll let you know, you know, hey, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be the primary Sometimes they may be primaries for several different babies and in that case they may, you know, say well, I'm sorry I've already primary for several babies. I, I can't do this, but I'll be as involved or I'll be able to ask, uh, you know, answer questions if you have any. And so that happens sometimes. But for the most part you're really able to keep the same people together and that way you build that trust. They call you, they give you information, you can talk to them a little bit more freely. Okay, so these are some of the things that you can do. And again, the NICU is really overwhelming when you first come in. I'm gonna continue to do these series for the rest of the month, these videos that really kind of help you orient. We've talked about when you first come in, let's, we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens for the first few weeks, what you can do, some of the things you will see. And we'll keep on doing these videos for the rest of the month of September for NICU Awareness Month. As usual, if you have any comments, questions, if there's one thing in particular you want me to address in any of these videos, please put them in the comments section. You know, let me know your experience and how it's been in your hospital. You know, when you first come into the NICU, some of the things that maybe you feel really help. That way I can mention these things for other families to use, other tips to use, either on my YouTube channel or through Instagram, okay? So thank you again for, for you know, being present at this video. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the support. I'll continue to do this. I, I really enjoy it, it's a passion of mine. You know, please support my cause to be able to get these videos. And uh, again, I appreciate everything you guys do and I will see you in the next video. See you later.